What's going on guys, it's Jake from The Cutting Mechanics and today I want to go over how to transition between bottle cutting and mat cutting. Now as most of you know, the three main points for bottle cutting is going to be speed, technique, and edge alignment. Okay, those are the three main points for bottle cutting. Now for mat cutting, the three main points are edge alignment, power, and technique. Those are the three main points for mat cutting. Now you notice that some of them overlap, but bottle curriculum doesn't emphasize power because, I mean, you really don't need any power to cut through bottles, more so speed. Now for mat cutting, though, you need power to uh, pass through the mats and, you know, do uh, cutting patterns on mats. So let me demonstrate real quick. First off, this is Neido. So it's a dull and this serves as my safe training tool. Now, when you're cutting bottles, generally all you're using is your upper body, your arms, your wrists, your shoulders, and your chest. That's really all you, all you have to use. All you have to do is just get in a stance and flick your wrists and there you go, you got a double cut, no matter what cutting pattern you're trying to do, where it's one hand, whatever a lot of uh, flicking your wrists and you got a lot of speed and you know uh, cutting bottles and doing doubles on bottles um, stems from there but for mats you have to have a lot of power because if you just try to flick your wrist through the mat you're not going to get through especially if you're cutting like Mugen Dachi or Tatami Omote now the way to train your power first off is how to have a good stance, okay? Don't have your feet close together and try to cut through a mat, otherwise from the power that you're gonna be generating, you're gonna just throw yourself off balance and that's dangerous, okay? So, what you should do is spread your feet about shoulder width apart, maybe a little wider, so that way you have a good solid stance and bend your knees. So that way you're not gonna, you know, knock yourself over, off balance, and things like that. Now, remember that I said that mat, cutting mats has three main points, which is edge alignment, technique, power, you know, whatever order you want to put them in. But in this case, I'm going to focus on power because you're, you've already been training your edge alignment and technique with cutting balls or whatever. Okay, but for mat cutting, Power is something that you want to train. Now there's two, two subcategories to power. For power, you, there is initial power that you get from, you know, initially generating power. And then there's follow through power. Okay, that's the power that you have to maintain as you pass through the target and come out. Okay, because in all honesty, there is no point to cutting mats if you're starting at 100% power in the beginning and then after you cut the mat, you only have 50% power. There's no point to cutting like that because you're obviously doing something wrong, okay? Now, when you cut, generally no matter what kind of sword you use, no matter what kind of mat you're using, it shouldn't feel like you're hitting a brick wall, okay? Unless your sword's dull, but as long as your sword is sharp, it shouldn't feel like you're hitting a brick wall. All it should feel like is, oh hey, my sword kind of slowed down here, but you know, that's it. Alright, so when you're generating power, first off, let me uh, start with initial power. Take your stance, and for initial power, what you're utilizing is your core, and your hips, and your lower body. Okay? so. I like to take my stance with my sword at my side around here and notice that my elbows are bent. Okay? So as I'm getting ready to cut, I'm utilizing my hips. You can see that my hips are turning. Utilizing my hips and bending my body a little bit to get that angle that I need. Now that's the initial stage of power. Okay, the initial power that you're generating as you're coming through. 